be in the norm that you would have such accessibility to these grounds. Indeed, those who appreciate history would know it would be few and far between that ordinary mortals like ourselves would have access to these grounds. And it speaks well to the evolution of times and the progress that has come to our country and the progress that has come in the socio-economic landscape of the Caribbean region, that places which were once exclusive have now become open up to our people. And it speaks well of His Excellency's own grounding in our history for him to appreciate the importance of providing this accessibility to our people, particularly on a significant occasion as this one, where we are celebrating the industry of our people, the creativity of our people. And I use those words again recalling history and recalling so many years ago before emancipation, when there were turbulence in turbulent Jamaica, as would be the norm then. And as members petitioned then the royal family to ask for their intervention, the royal family responded with some profound words that added to agitation, but in my view were sensible recommendations. He said that it is to their industry and creativity that the people must look to their own salvation. It is to their industry and creativity that the people must look for their own salvation. I believe if we were to adopt that in our professional and personal lives, a lot more would be accomplished by our departments, by our country, and by our people. And in some ways, as we gather to look at a third evolution in the application of ICT in the Customs and Excise Department, perhaps there is occurring somewhere that recommendation, at one point an admonition that came all the way from London. Here in St. Kitts and Nevis, we can say, that the Customs Department is depending upon their own industry and creativity to do good on behalf of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. I want therefore to applaud the Comptroller of Customs, Mr. Bell, for the application of industry and creativity. And he lauded you before for your industry and we are told Mr. Butler will at some point lead us in an appreciation of the creative use of technology for national good. So I congratulate you. I congratulate you for your performance in the past. And I would wish to congratulate you in advance for an even better performance in 2017. I was happy that the controller himself laid out the standard. And if you are to prove him true, and he should be proved true, because he did it on the guise of quoting from the scripture, <laughs> that he was doing it by faith, the essence of things, and so on and so on. And so we are hoping that indeed for this year, many things will be done much better than last year. We expect that for 2017, you will continue to be a depend dependable revenue collector, an excellent border security agency, a firm facilitator of trade, and true and trustworthy enabler of trade compliance in the Federation. Returning to the revenue collection, we note that the Customs and Excise Department reported revenues 
in the region of 177.5 million dollars in 2016. Let's give them a round of applause. And we thank you for that support to the National Treasury. The Customs Department is the second largest generator of revenue after the Inland Revenue Department. And so the success of this department is critically important. And all eyes are always, and should always be, and those who hold custody and responsibility for the generation of revenues to satisfy the needs of the people of the country. I smile because I too have faith that for 2017, the revenue of 177.5 million will go tenfold. So I want to give yourself a round of applause in that anticipation. I am delighted by the knowledge that the official customs website, which we meet to launch today, helps to achieve all these objectives and more. Understanding that this is the third generation of SKNCustoms.com in the last decade, there is a sense of admiration and respect for the department as it understands that there is an ongoing need for change and progressive thinking if we are to remain relevant and respected in our fields of expertise. All three websites, past, present, and the one which we launched today, share at least one significant thread of purpose, and that is information sharing on the part of the department. With each new dispensation, the accessibility of information is expected to become easier for users. I am confident that the designers of this new website took this into mind, especially since St. Kitts and Nevis and the world are on the verge of operating under the guidance of the WTOs. The WTOs, yes, the WTOs, Trade Facilitation Agreement. When four nation states notify the WTO that their respective governments have ratified this agreement and the TFA comes into effect. I am happy to say that more than six months ago, on June 17, 2016, St. Kitts and Nevis presented our notification of ratification. And there, we advise the world at large that we are willing and able to abide by the provisions of this historic and onerous agreement. That is why it gives me great pleasure today, Sunday, the 22nd of January, as part of Customs Week of Celebrations, to officially launch this new website of the St. Kitts and Nevis Customs and Excise Department. And it is my hope and our wish that this website will serve the nation well. May God bless us all. I thank you.